Before I wrap up, I'd like to invite on stage Janet Galore uh, to show you some of the concepts that we're working on in Microsoft Research to really help push the envelope of how people use technology. So please join me in welcoming Janet. Hi, Steve. Hi, it's great to be here. Good to be here. So um, I'd like to walk you through some conceptual prototypes around future technologies that are going to really change the way we find, use, and share information. And this is really centered around some educational scenarios, but think about how this could be used in all kinds of activities that you do. And so suppose I'm a college student and I'm taking a bunch of different classes, but I'm looking at some information for my anatomy class here. And I've also got this really great digital textbook that I can drill into. And it's here I'm looking at the skeletal system in the hand, and I can look around in different places. I can load information from about the nervous system. And as I'm clicking through here, it's actually pulling in information from the cloud. So it's connecting me to all kinds of information sources. And I can look at more specific information here. I've got Gray's Anatomy, and I get a different view. And if I want to look beyond the hand, I can actually zoom out and get a full 3D model of the human body. And I can go, let's take a look at the brain here. So notice here, again, it's loading some resources from the cloud, and it's accessing other information sources to go deeper. Now we're at the synapses. I hope my uh, synapses <laughs> look that clean. <laughs> I'm sure they're OK. <laughs> And so here, I've got some information that was provided by my professor. And there's actually an animation I can play here. And so it's really something that I can explore and do whatever I like here. And oh, here, my, my colleague, my Patrick, says, check out my drawing. So imagine that Patrick might know that I'm actually online now and exploring this section of the model. If we're working on a project together, he's asking me to take a look at this picture that he's drawn over the weekend. So the types of social networking that we're doing today are really going to be more deeply integrated and very useful to all the different kinds of activities. I've also got a bunch of other resources. So you know, we think about all the information available to us, and it can get a little overwhelming. So what's happened is the system has actually anticipated the types of resources that I might want to use while I'm browsing this, and according to my preferences and the studies. And they're color-coded according to what's more relevant, so the green's more relevant to my classwork. If this is too much, I can actually filter and just look at the stuff from my study group. Let's see what they're asking us to look at. This one looks kind of fun. It's caffeine in your brain. Uh, so this is a simulation that somebody else wrote using the models that are provided in the textbook here. So that's my brain on Starbucks, basically? Yes. And I've, so here we can, here's, here's your brain on Starbucks That's a my lot. fourth iced tea of the day. <laughs> so the person wrote a, a, a nice slider here. And like the other information, I'm also, it's kind of tracking, OK, this isn't that related to my studies. But if I want to look at something a little bit more related here, this is a paper from the National Institutes of Health. So with papers, sometimes it's hard to know if you really want to um, explore them. So here again, the software is helping me out. This is actually a semantic analysis of the whole paper. This map was created using algorithms from Microsoft Research. And it's showing me how all the different concepts of the paper are related to each other, as well as to what I'm working on. Just by semantic analysis of the document itself. Yes. And, and so we can use that, too, if I want to go ahead and look at the text. That similar analysis can be used to highlight the paragraphs that are more relevant. And, and that way, I don't even have to do that myself at the beginning. If I get a little more information about this, I can see that actually it was originally written in Japanese. So machine translation has already provided that information for me, and it's transparent to what I want to do. If I want to save that as my notes, it loads it to, into my notes. And I've got this really great timeline at the, at the top here. If I want to go back in time and look at what I was working on a long time ago, here, <laughs> this is back in junior high biology. This is showing me when I was looking at anatomy. OK, I wasn't that great of an artist. I can zoom out a little bit and see the other things that I was working on, all the different subjects I was exploring. And then today, here's what I'm working on today. So beyond what I've, all the notes and the tests I've had, I also can see ahead that I've got a group presentation coming up, and we've got a meeting in the library to work on it as a class. So let's take a look at how some of these technologies can help us collaborate. Super. So imagine I'm, I'm in the library, and this is a Surface computer. We'll see a lot more of these types of natural user interfaces in these in these applications. And I can put my tablet down, 
and it's showing me some documentation that I've collected and I want to share with my study group. But not everybody wants to use a tablet, perhaps, and some people will be doing a lot of computing on their phones and storing their notes and information. So they can put the phone down, and there's some more information there that they might want to share. I also have this great publish for review folder here. So it's actually allowing me to share this information with other people in my study group in a really simple way. And it's going to sync across even the people who aren't there as well as their devices and so on. So I can put that in there too. So this is a really great example of some devices working seamlessly together. But beyond the devices, even everyday objects are going to become more interactive. So I've got a model of the brain here that we've been using in anatomy class. And if I put that down on the surface, we'll see we have access points that are color-coded in the same uh. way. And I can drill into that and, and see that this has been annotated with information. So that might have been done by my professor, perhaps other students, or by the manufacturer. All right, so here's these, this is looking at a future software on kind of current hardware, but we've also been playing around with some new types of displays. This is actually a flexible display. It's less than a millimeter thick. And um, it's, active, it's an active display. It's very similar to the types of, of e-ink displays that we see in digital textbook or digital book readers right now. So we see these displays evolving into color displays, something that you could probably roll up into your backpack or fold <laughs> and take it with you and use it perhaps with your phone or wherever you need a display. Well, the future of the way I'll do reading will really be on one of these nice, light, digital screens. Well, and this could, be, this could become the future surface, you know. It's a possibility. Right. Absolutely. So thank Absolutely. you very much. Well, thank you, Janet. Appreciate Thanks. it.